I'm willing to bet that you probably didn't get into education because you enjoy writing rubrics. Rubric design is not something that teachers love. I do, as an educator, love assigning project-based learning assignments for my students, but student choice can get a little tricky because of all those rubrics that I have to design and then share with my students. So in this episode of How To With Sue, we are going to explore a way to leverage uh, Google's free curriculum, Apply Digital Skills, where you just take the rubrics and then you plug those into Google Classroom. Okay, so here we are in the Apply Digital Skills mainframe, so the main landing page, if you wanna call it that, where you can navigate through the curriculum, log in as a teacher or even as a student, toggle back and forth between the two. When you set up your classes, if that's what you decide to do, everything would be right here under classes. But really, you know, the meat and potatoes of Applied Digital Skills is if you were to click on lessons right here, because that's where you're going to find the curriculum. And of course, the rubrics, which is what we're looking for for this video. When I click on lessons right here, and I'm just going to shrink myself down a tad, move myself over, you'll see it starts with collections up top and then at the bottom are lessons. So right now on this day, there are 148 lessons. A week ago in a workshop, we were at 146. So the number is always going up. They're always adding to this curriculum. Let's just pop into create a presentation all about a topic. You can see here, this is the most popular lesson in the curriculum. Under teaching materials, so activities is where you'll find all of the videos, uh, the uh, activity reflections, as well as those extensions, which I'll talk about in another video. But we're going to head on into teaching materials. Now, of those 148 lessons, all of them, all of them have teaching materials and all of them have sample rubrics. So if you don't love writing rubrics, you can come into this sample rubric to either um, look here and see what their recommended components are. You can call these mark bands or the criterion, um, or you can uh, just see on what scale they're grading their students or they're recommending that teachers grade their students here. Or you can just copy and paste it, which is what I do sometimes. If I have my students writing a press release, I'll pop into the press release or resumes about maybe some famous filmmakers. They'll, uh, you know, be graded according to the resume lesson. Uh, so again, we're not reinventing the wheel here, working smarter, not harder. So when I come into this rubric, you can see that all I have to do is just make a copy if I'd like to do that, but I don't even really have to do that. I can just copy and paste what they already have into a rubric if I already have one that I'm starting to design, especially if it's a rubric that I'd like to use in Google Classroom. So what do I mean by that? In the description below this video, you'll also see a force copy link for the Applied Digital Skills rubric template. So I color coded this a little bit. It's really not rocket science here, though it does look a little strange. This is the template that you must use in order to create a rubric in Google Sheets and upload it in Classroom. So that's why this is kind of a valuable uh, template here. But ultimately you can see the mark bands. And what I did was I matched the wording that's in the uh, rubric in Applied Digital Skills. So criterion one, title components, the description, which is optional. And then these are going to be your mark bands or your grading point values, depending on however many points you want to give these uh, each of these assignments, whatever titles you want to give them. Again, I just tried to match them and apply digital skills for the sake of the rubric. So it's a little bit easier to match up. So if we look at criterion one uh, with beginning, developing, accomplished, and exemplary, when we come back to the all about a topic rubric, we'll see the component would be presentation, presentation, beginning, developing, accomplished, and exemplary. Again, you can change these. Even if you just wanted to use the, the rubric here, you would be able to go file, make a copy, and make some changes there. Um, you can also cell by cell copy uh, into Google Classroom rubrics if you wanted to make that right in Google Classroom. But we're going to try to keep this in Sheets. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to copy this into the sheet, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to upload it. Okay, we are back now, uh, and I just want to show you what I did here uh, just to make it a little bit easier for us. Um, over here on the left-hand side, you'll see all about a topic rubric. So again, this was from Applied Digital Skills. Underneath your teacher resources, teacher materials, you can see that this is the rubric that they recommend uh, that you evaluate your students with. 
again, all the lessons have different rubrics for the different uh, lessons. Uh, then I'm gonna come over here. This is the template that I shared with you down in the description uh, on this video. And it's a forced copy in Google Sheets. So what I would do is when I open this, it's already gonna open up as a copy for you. But um, if you'd like to, you can go file, make another copy. And then what I did was I created an all about a topic presentation to match the formatting of being able to upload this into Google Classroom directly from Sheets. So I know it says up here, it's not recommended that you uh, edit the rubrics in spreadsheet format. Um, knock on wood, I mean, I haven't had any issues with it, uh, but um, you know, obviously if you need to go in and edit it, we're gonna look it over anyways once we get into uh, Google Classroom. So uh, just comparing and contrasting here, presentation, content, formatting, animations, and transitions, we have those here. I'd view over the mark bands, make changes to the point value if I wanted to do that. So that was to save us some time. I also started creating an assignment in Google Classroom. So uh, what I wanna do is call your attention to what this would look like here. So if I wanted to use a rubric and import it from Sheets, and this can be any uh, rubric, whether it's a rubric that a teacher shares with me if we assign a similar project, this is how you would upload a rubric from Sheets. And you would just kind of keep going through that process. When you create an assignment under your Classwork tab, you have your title here, and then as soon as you're done typing your title, sometimes I even like to click in instructions, which might be where you tell your students the modifications that you wanna make in the lesson to achieve your learning outcomes and so on and so forth. Add or create whatever you wanna do down here. But if I click on rubric now, which won't be clickable until after I add in a title, but if I click in rubric and go import from sheets, now the last spreadsheet that I had open is all about a topic in that applied digital skills format. So we're just gonna click that to add it. What's gonna happen here is it's gonna open up this new window here, all about a topic presentation, which is the title of our rubric. I can see the different criterion here. And it says points one, two, three, and four. And I can read through these just to double check. Now I'll look at this and see, okay, 20 points. I thought that there were only four components. So let's keep on scrolling down. Content, how is that looking? It's looking great. Formatting, how's that looking? Again, looking great. Animations, sure, looks great. Oh, and then look, they, they got in that last one that was uh, that was all blank except for my template area. So to delete that, I'll just click on those three dots and then hit delete that criteria. You'll see that now we're at 16 points. And if you do use this uh, uh, rubric for grading, it will calculate to your percentage. So if it's a 100 point assignment, it'll uh, weigh out those grades for you. Now I have had issues before where if I try to hit save, sometimes it won't save when I import from Sheets unless I uh, just tell it to either go in ascending or descending order. So I think I, you know, you can go to descending or I like to grade on an upward scale. So we'll keep it there. And then go ahead and hit save. And once you do, your rubric has been created. Your rubric can be reused. You can reuse it with other classes. You can reuse it whether you archive the Google Classroom or not. If I were to open this to be able to look at this, uh, this is exactly what my students will be able to see. And this is exactly what I'll be able to see if I decide to grade this within Google Classroom for my students. I hope that you guys found that to be helpful and maybe something that you'll use. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up and leave some love in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe because I have lots more where that's coming from. Thanks so much for stopping by.